So we're going to practice converting from polar to rectangular. Um, and we're going to start at some relatively simple ones and then kind of work our way up. Um, so this first one, we have the equation r is equal to 3. Well, if you think back to what that means, that means that you're graphing things on the polar um, coordinate that has a radius of 3. Well, everything that has a radius of 3 would be everything on a circle here with radius equals 3. Well, it's centered at the origin, and so even without using any of this information, we know that this needs to give us x squared plus y squared equals 3 squared, which is 9. Um, so just checking to see, just making sure we know how to use this, we could say that r, well, we could say r squared is equal to 9 from here, and then we know from here that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared equals 9. So you can um, use the, the, the rules that we have here without um, kind of almost without thinking, you know, just kind of plug in and, and start plugging and chugging. Or you could think about, well, what does this even mean? And that's how you get that equation. On this one, we're given that theta is equal to pi over 3. So if we keep in mind what that means, that tells us that we're looking at the angle pi over 3 that's something like this. Um, so it's going to be this line, and if we want to write the equation of that line, we can say y equals mx plus b. We know that it's passing through the origin, and we know um, that we, we know our unit circle still, hopefully. Um, and if you think about at this um, pi over 3, you went up root 3 over 2 and over 1 half. And so the tangent value is root 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, which is root 3. So the slope, the tangent value, is also the slope. So this one just becomes y is equal to root 3 times x. Um, we could also have used this information over here, um, just, how, just a different way to kind of process through what was happening. Um, hopefully that's helpful. In the next one, we have that r is equal to secant of theta. So let's rewrite that and say, um, well, that's r is equal to 1 over cosine theta. Well, secant is 1 over cosine. I see that I have an equation here that lets me do something with r times cosine theta. Notice I can get there pretty quickly, and I can say that r cosine theta is equal to 1, and so this just becomes the equation x equals 1. Our next one is going to have us start with something like um, r is equal to 5 over cosine theta minus sine theta. Um, and now with something like that, we're going to use this information to be, we're going to find that's going to be really helpful for us. Um, so if I cross multiply or multiply both sides by cosine theta minus sine theta, I get r cosine theta minus r sine theta equals 5. Well, now this is coming in very handy. r cosine theta is just x, r sine theta is just y, so that's x minus y equals 5. Um, and if we plug that into our calculator, we should find that it's a line, um, which is what this is showing us as well. Our last example for this video is definitely more complicated than what we've seen before. Um, and we're going to say r equals sine of 3 theta. Now, our formulas here don't have anything in terms of something besides just theta. So we have to remember our trig identities um, to get this sine of 3 theta in terms of just theta. Okay, so I'm going to recognize that this is um, 1 theta plus 2 theta, which then can break down to sine cosine plus cosine sine, oops, sorry, um, and then I'm, and now I'm down to having things in terms of theta and 2 theta, but I just need theta. So, um, and if this last step was a little confusing for you, go back to our identities unit, because um, that's straight from what we knew before. Um, and I can say, okay, so this is sine theta. Um, cosine 2 theta, I've got different options. I'm going to go ahead and use the version cosine squared minus sine squared. 
and then this plus, okay, sorry, we're going to run in a little space here. This becomes cosine theta times 2 sine theta cosine theta. And now I need to distribute, um, distribute this through the first one. And then notice when I do the second part down here, I end up with a cosine squared times sine. Um, and if I do that, this one right here times that also gives me a cosine squared times sine. So I have one cosine squared times sine from this part right here, and then I have two cosine squared sine right here. So when I clean this up, and if I had more space, I'd probably um, write this somewhere else, but this becomes three sine theta cosine um, squared theta, and then I just subtract, now I have to distribute this to there. So um, that gives me sine cubed theta. So this whole row right here, um, this whole equation, everybody is in terms of just theta. So that is a good sign for us. Um, we're not quite finished, but um, hopefully you followed how I was able to get 3 sine cosine squared by going here and then this whole thing and putting those together. Okay, so picking up where we left off, um, we've got this in terms of, everybody's in terms of theta. Um, what we know, though, is that if we're going to solve for x and y, if we're going to get things in terms of x and y, we need to have our cosine theta and then our sine theta. Well, right here, I don't have any value of r. What I can do, but I've got one, here's a sine value, and then this is a cosine and another cosine. Okay, so I could break this part. I'm going to need an r cubed times this term here. And then when I look at this one right here, I have sine cubed. So if I had r cubed also, then I could break that down to r sine theta times r sine theta times r sine theta. Um, so I'm going to multiply every term by r cubed, which gives me r to the fourth is equal to 3 r cubed sine theta cosine squared theta minus r cubed sine cubed theta. Okay, so rearranging this, I have 3 times r sine times, this becomes an r cosine where the whole thing is getting squared, and this is an r sine where the whole thing is getting cubed. Okay, so now this, this one right here could be rewritten as, instead of saying r to the fourth, I could say that this is r squared squared. That's messy, but do you see what I'm trying to, oh, no, I just made it worse. My bad. Okay, you know where I'm going with that. Um, r squared we know to be x squared plus y squared. Well, it's r squared squared is equal to, this is 3, r, um, r sine theta right here is y, and then this becomes r cosine theta is our x, but that's x squared minus, that's a y cubed. And this, believe it or not, is an answer that your textbook would accept.